Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah buys a field. Wow. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot in here too. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the 10th year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, which was the 18th year of Nebuchadnezzar, the army of the king of Babylon was then besieging Jerusalem, and Jeremiah the prophet was confined in the courtyard of the guard in the royal palace of Judah. Okay, so just a quick reminder, now things are happening. So Jeremiah has been telling them over and over again, here comes the king of Babylon. So he came once, now he's coming back. Uh, he, the, preached, the priests and the prophets that were there, uh, all of whom were of Baal and who, whatever, and the king didn't want to hear what Jeremiah kept saying, like, so, you know, go ahead and go to Babylon, etc. They don't want to hear that. So they had him thrown in jail. So that's where he, he's, Jeremiah the prophet was confined in the courtyard of the guard in the royal palace of Judah. They didn't want to hear what he had to say. So they put him in jail. Let's continue to read. <clears throat> now Zedekiah, king of Judah, had imprisoned him there, saying, Why do you prophesy, prophesy as you do? You say this is what the Lord says. I am about to hand the city over to the king of Babylon, and he will capture it. Zedekiah, king of Judah, will not escape out of the hands of the Babylonians, but will certainly be handed over to the king of Babylon and will speak with him face to face and see him with his own eyes. He will take Zedekiah to Babylon, where he will remain until I deal with him him, declares the Lord. If you fight against the Babylonians, you will not succeed. So as you can see, King Zedekiah was not too happy about Jeremiah telling him the truth, but you know, he, because Zedekiah didn't really, he didn't want to hear it. He didn't want to hear it. He's like, well, you know, <laughs> remember the Lord's will be done. So good luck trying to, uh, remove, you know, try to prevent the Lord's will. <laughs> so <laughs> good luck on that <laughs> that's already a pre-failed attempt okay let's continue <laughs> and i mean it, in fact before we go on there is okay there is a i mean just with that just with that there is a lot that that people it's hard to grasp for people that the Lord's will be done no matter what. <clears throat> it's one of those that I want to give you to think about. Because a lot of there's a lot of times when people start to believe that it's something that has to happen, whether they do it or there's some type of control that people start to feel that they have in order for the will of the Lord to be done. Or that it can be prevented. <laughs> um, I'm here to tell you, we're, we're, and we're learning slowly but surely, the Lord's will will be done. Like, you can go back to Exodus, you can go back to uh, the book of Samuel, you can go back to, uh, I mean, anywhere. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> before we go on, like, um, before we go on, though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? Like, can, you know, and think about it in your life, the, that question, the Lord's will be done. And we also can realize that when we're not, when we're not um, having a walk with the Lord, the Lord's will may end up going against us. Look at Israel. Look at as many times as they wanting to do what they wanted to do and not listening to the prophets, not listening to the, the people who were coming and telling them the Lord's will, will, saying, okay, you need to stop or you need to go in this direction, but they would do in the opposite direction. They would go and fight after they were told not to and they would get defeated. And then, or they would uh, leave out the widows or who, whoever and the there would be a major problem. So they didn't understand that it was their own consequences continually over and over again. And that the Lord's will will be done. So before we go on though, um, and I, I don't, I'm not going to leave it just there. Cause just keep that in mind though. Keep that in mind that the Lord's will be done. And that when we are 
in guidance with the Lord, he not only guides us, but he blesses us, blesses us along the way, like beyond our wildest dreams and imaginations. He is the good shepherd. Trust in him. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think?